Hello, my name is Michel Reinen. I'm a vascular surgeon from Arnhem in the Netherlands. And today I'll be speaking about cost effectiveness of DCB treatment for chronic limb threading ischemia for femoral popliteal artery disease. Chronic limb threading ischemia is associated with a high risk of limb loss, and this has an impact on the quality of life of these patients. Dracota balloons play an increasing role in the treatment of CLTI caused by FEMPOP occlusive disease with a reported 82% patency rate and a 7% major amputation rate through 12 months in a meta-analysis. And the objective of the current study was to assess the potential cost effectiveness of DCB for a standard of care treatment in the Dutch and the German healthcare society. In this slide, you see what happened uh, with healthcare costs during the last decennia. On the left side, you see the US uh, situation, on the right side, the situation in the Netherlands. And you see during the years, that more and more money is spent per capita on healthcare. And this indicates that cost effectiveness is becoming more and more important. So what we did, uh, we developed a decision analytic markup model using the Dutch and the German reimbursement data. And we compared two groups. One group was treated with a DCB uh, with bailout stenting, and the other one was a status quo, which was standard PTA with primary or bailout stenting. For the DCB group, we took the Impact Global Registry, which contained 156 patients that were treated for CLI, uh, and they were categorized in Rutherford 4 and 5. And then for the comparator, we performed a systematic literature review and took the data from all these studies. So in this study, we did a quality analysis, um, and we looked at the incremental cost effectiveness ratio of DCBs versus the status quo. Uh, and that was evaluated as the cost per quality adjusted life year, or quali. A quali is an outcome that expresses the duration of the quality of life. And it's a measure of survival time that is adjusted by the quality of life of the patient. And qualies are measured on a scale from zero to one. For example, a patient with a monthly angina is considered at 0.76, based on the assumption that one year living with monthly angina is equivalent to 1.76 years in perfect health. We then made a decision analytic markup model for each country separately, and strategy-specific quality gains were calculated from the survival and health state-specific utilities. When we look at the clinical inputs of our model, we see that the TLR rate at one year in the DCB group was 14%, whereas it was 18% at the status quo group. And the major amputation group was 1.4% in the patients treated with DCBs, and 6.1% in the control group. And you see that these differences are also seen in the two years projected uh, data. In the model, we analyzed three states. There was the post endovascular intervention uh, state, there was the post-major amputation state, and there was the death of the patient. When we look at TLR first, um, having one TLR had a 0.059 quality decrement uh, only one single time. So at the next point, it was gone again. Amputation led to a 0.68 quality decrement applied to the post-amputation period. And the base case used a two-year horizon. And uh, we, the willingness to pay threshold was set at 50,000 euros per quality. And then in addition, we performed sensitivity analysis um, to evaluate variations in clinical inputs and device use parameters. These are the costs. Um, on the left side, you see the situation for the Netherlands and the right side for Germany. And you see in the dark blue uh, bars that the, in, the procedural costs are higher in the DCB group, which is related to the additional costs of the drug coated balloon. But then when we look at the TLR costs and the amputation costs, you see that uh, these are higher in the status quo group when compared to the DCB group. And this leads to a cost saving in both healthcare communities. It's a thousand euro saving in the Netherlands and roughly 500 euro saving in Germany. In this slide, you see the two year calculated qualities for both countries. And you see that in both countries, there's an increase in qualities of 0.017, which is higher as had been reported for intermittent claudication. In this very complex slide with uh, multiple data, you see the uh, outcomes of the sensitivity analysis. Uh, the main message here is that DCB was dominant or cost-effective across the wide range of assumptions. In fact, there were only a few uh, situations where um, DCB treatment was no longer dominant, but still cost-effective. And those were the situations where amputations were either higher in the DCB group or neglected at all. 
In those cases, it was still cost effective based on the uh, lower TLR rates, uh, but no longer dominant. So in summary, in this analysis of the impact Admiral DCB, DCB treatment was associated with favorable health economic value in both Germany and the Netherlands. It was associated with lower costs and higher qualities and is therefore likely to be dominant strategy in both the Dutch and the German settings. The higher DCB index procedural costs are offset over 24 months by reduced reintervention rates and avoided amputations. Um, however, because the study was evaluated only on a registry study and compared to the literature, future studies are needed to confirm these data. And with that, I would like to thank you for listening.